Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Life of Pre. It is a beautiful morning. I have my bike back. I get to bike to work, you know. So, yeah, off to a good start. Um, let's see. This morning at 8 a.m., I had a meet and greet with my new team members in Fargo. So that went really well. And I'm excited. Oh, my gosh. I leave this Saturday. It still doesn't seem real that I will leave Saturday and be gone for six weeks. So... Whew, yeah, a lot to still get done. So let's get to it. But first things first, I need to buy myself a new lock because mine's was cut. And this here is the Davis Bike Barn. And I ended up with a extra long U-lock and a cable cord. That way I can lock my main frame using the U-lock and then use the cord to go around my front tire, which is a quick release. So kind of expensive, but extra secure. Anyway, once finally back in lab, it, it was time to do a gel extraction because I've been trying to determine for the past few months if there is a deletion in the promoter of my gene. And to do that, we need to actually extract the bands from the gel and sequence them to determine if the bands are what we think they are. Um, and we do that by making a very thick gel and the wells in the gel can hold up to 50 microliters. So instead of doing a typical 20 microliter reaction, we do one for 50. And it's then the same PCR protocol. You run the gel from black to red um, and add the 50 microliters to each well, add your ladders and let it run and hopefully get clear bands that we can then extract. And in this case, the PCR worked beautifully. And so we need to extract five of these bands, which I pointed out here, and we're going to sequence them. And because UV light is dangerous to the human eye, I have to look ridiculous wearing this and use a scalpel to literally cut out the bands. Um, and I will then put them into tubes and I'll walk you through a gel extraction procedure. Also, I'm not 100% sure why my hand is glowing under the UV light, but science? <laughs> So fortunately, the gel extraction protocol is quite simple. First, we weigh our tubes and determine which one weighs the most. We will then use that value to calculate how much buffer and isopropanol we need to add later on. And first, we add the buffer. Our largest tube was 0.25 grams, so we're going to add times 3 that, which equals 750 microliters of buffer. We then heat it at 50 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, flicking it every two to three minutes until it's clear. After this, we add the isopropanol, which is only times one the value of our greatest tube. So we add 250 microliters and invert it several times. We're then going to run it through these columns here and discard the waste. The DNA will stick to the inside of the column, which is pretty neat. We then wash it or elude it with a buffer PE. I don't know what's in it. You know, it's just from the company. Um, and we use 750 microliters there and discard the waste as well. We then centrifuge it for two minutes to make sure the column is dry before putting the um, column onto a 1.5 milliliter, milliliter tube and adding 50 microliters of buffer EB or pure water, which is what I'm going to use here because I'm cheap and it works. We let it sit for a minute, that way the DNA dissolves into it, and then spin it down, and voila, we have our end product that we are going to sequence tomorrow. Okay, so there you have it. We did a gel extraction. Tomorrow I will add some primers to it and send it off for sequencing, and hopefully once and for all I will know if there's a deletion in the promoter or not. With that, I am basically done for today, have some stuff running, um, like some more PCRs, I'll get up early tomorrow to go to the field to harvest a few more plants and to, you know, start collecting stuff in the greenhouse because I can't really leave it all there for six weeks um, when it's ready to be collected. So yeah, I can't believe it is Wednesday. I hope you all had a good midway uh, day during your week and I will see you all tomorrow.